All right, hello everybody. I am now at the Rip Road Roadhouse. Check this place out. Look at all the parking. I think they have uh, car shows out here every so often. I don't know all the details about it, but uh, in the summertime, I've been wanting to come. Uh, the whole time I'm in the studio, sometimes I'll go online and I'll do some research to see what's going on in the local community. And I have not been here, I don't think it was, since 2010. And I'm stopping here for a reason to share with you. Check this out. Isn't that cool? I like that up there. The balcony seats and stuff. And the name. I used to play at a roadhouse was it Roadhouse Cafe or just Roadhouse uh, Restaurant in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania for about a year and a half, two years. I was there every single Thursday. And I always liked the name. That's back when I did acoustic shows. And when I came here, I think it was August. I don't remember the date. I would if I was at home. But it was in August 2010 when I met Paul and we had talked he had invited me to be a part of one of the shows he did here. And um, that's what I'm going to share with you now. So when I came in through the entrance and I saw this, I don't know if it was in different management ownership at that time, but I thought it was really cool. And one thing that's really decent is, at least that day, there was a whole lot of motorcycles lined up here. I used to like to play biker events. I only did a few of them in my life, but I, they're fun to play. So check this out. This is what I wanted to share with you. Right here, look at this. They do have a bike night uh, every Wednesday night. Ta -da! And this is the stage that I played with Paul on. I don't know if it's okay for me to go up it or not. There we go. I was right here. And we did a acoustic. He did, a, I think he did an all acoustic that day. And Paul sat over here. Hello. I sat over here. And he played the mandolin with me. One thing I used to love about meeting with Paul is that when I would play some of my songs, he was a really good, well-rounded musician as well as a writer and singer. And he played the mandolin for some of my songs and I really, really loved it. And when he invited me here to play in 2010, I asked him if he would be playing with me because I didn't really want to play alone at that time. Uh, without explaining too much detail, I was going through a lot. And though I was an entertainer for years, um, there was many gripes for me as I went through life that I wanted to do things with others. So that was my opportunity. And also I didn't feel truly able. I was not the same person as I was back when I used to entertain. So, and look at this view, isn't that great? And the whole time that I was sitting there singing and playing, that's what I was looking at. And I just thought that was really cool. I think I did like uh, maybe 20 minutes to 45 minutes, somewhere in there, half an hour. And Paul played a few songs. I do have photographs that I share online. I also have one hanging, uh, maybe two of them hanging in my apartment. And. I think I shared them online, my photographs, when I share my photographs. Uh, there's a photographs of me and Paul playing together. I can imagine what it was like when he played with his friends. I only had the opportunity to see him play with a full band one time in 2010, and they were really good. I was really impressed. Because uh, at that time of me studying music as I went through life, I did pay attention to people who do make recordings as to whether or not when they're together and they're playing do they sound like the album and in my opinion uh, it was one of those situations that I was shocked that 
um, Paul and his friends were actually playing a venue as they were, you know, the tavern and stuff, because they were that good. So the sound was great. It looks like a pretty decent facility. And they got a backstage over there. And can I tell you, though that might be a really cool place for different people to play, I'd like to stop out here sometime and grab a bite to eat to hear people play uh, that are really good. Especially if they do original songs, you know, a majority of it, or at least a few. I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to play on the red stage and that we were not back in the corner. Just because the view was uh, like something in a movie. I think this would be a, a great uh, set location for a movie. With bikers and stuff, and all the cars and everything. It'd be a cool place to do a music video, wouldn't it? The fun spirit. So I'm gonna go up here. I don't know, the gates are open. Is it okay? Hopefully I don't get yelled at for doing this. It kinda looks like uh, a place they would have horses or something. You know, I wonder what kind of activities happen over there. Is that where the cars are? Because I was never here then. It looks like they have places for like bonfires and stuff. Isn't that cool? And I think from the videos I've seen online sometimes, they have people on the stage playing back this way. I don't know if I can go up here or not. Let's go. So, yeah, and uh, there's some photographs that I have of the day that I'm talking about. I was back here, and I carried my guitar and everything back here, and I was talking to some really nice people. The one thing I really appreciated was the people Paul were around, at least in my presence, they were very respectful to me and kind. And I can't begin to tell you, especially during that time, how much that meant to me. So I would like to say thank you for being nice to me. You see, um, though I don't want to go into too much detail, I was always kind of attracted to a biker crowd. As I went through life, and I would say probably around 2000-ish, as I was playing out a lot and stuff, I started realizing you know, at least the crowds that I was around were a lot of fun. I really started associating it with different movies also that I've seen and television shows that I've seen as I went through life. And I would say that when there were a lot of, so when there was much surrenderance to the truth within inside of myself, I started to realize that I was extremely attracted to certain personality types, friendly ones specifically, bikers. I kind of like, like that. I like to see stuff like that, the environment. Isn't that cool? We see a whole bunch of bikes together or see them riding and stuff, hanging out and having a good time. I don't know <laughs> what is the more polite way to say things like that. Because the last thing I want to do is upset anybody when I'm trying to be nice. Sometimes I just don't know how to say certain things. I wasn't expecting to actually do a video uh, today. So I'm glad that I did and I'm glad I stopped by here. I'm trying to keep it simple uh, and quickly. Check this out. I guess this is where they walk the gear up and they push the speakers and cabinets and whatever else. So that was one way I came up. I remember I met somebody really nice right around here who played bass. And I only had a very small time in speaking with them uh, back then in 2000. Because then I continued to move along and then come back, move along and come back up until about 2012-ish. Then I kind of been here. This is a stage from the back. I liked it because I, most of the time that I've done shows, as I said, I've done a lot of shows by myself, occasionally with other people, not always alone. So rarely, this was a rare occasion for me and 
Also, uh, I did not meet too many people as I went through life that were not signed to a major deal, uh, that were songwriters that were um, as spectacular as Paul was, or is, his music. Here's the steps. And I remember all the gear that was up here. Okay, and then they, they had chairs arranged so that we could kind of like sit, do an acoustic thing. And I look at these pictures on a regular basis um, because especially as I'm working on my music project, I like uh, to go through photographs, look at videos, uh, go places such as this. I've been wanting to come here for a couple years now. Um, but that's how serious I've been in working in the studio. So I spend, believe it or not, almost every day last three years working on that project. It ended up starting out as a 10 song CD that turned into two CDs, which turned into two and a half CDs. So I have two albums and one EP. And can I tell you, my hat is off to anybody who records music, uh, whether smaller projects or extraordinaire. It's always extraordinaire, you know what I mean big projects. It can be very tiresome, draining to do. So I look to come to areas like this to rejuvenate. I've learned a whole lot of other reasons to go to places are relieving to yourself or bring you some kind of joy like hobbies and stuff. I go bike riding a lot so I come back this trail and I, every time I did in 2000 and was since 2014 all the way up until like 2018 when I did the first two albums. I kept insisting that I was going to stop over here sometime because they make milkshakes. I don't know if they're homemade or not, but from what I perceived, I thought I would really like to try one of those sometime. I have not yet. I would like to get out in the summer sometime and come and see the car show or hear a band grab a milkshake because <laughs> I don't drink too much alcohol anymore especially if I'm out and about it's pretty cool isn't it I'm going to try to share a small video clip I had a camera I think it was mine that was with that day and the camera I had at that time that took videos it was only like six to ten seconds do you remember in the beginning of all of this digital video camera USB stuff. There was cameras that were made that mainly for photographs and then they would take like silent films of like six to 12 seconds or something. And I have one that I found outside of all the pictures where evidently I grabbed it and uh, I was walking down here. And I captured Paul David Bach singing and playing one of his songs. I was not that much into videoing back at that time because I was not really into self-portraits or videos, even period. I saw that as another form of art, hobby, passion for other people that was not necessarily my interest until around 2007, 8, 9, and then it slowly increased, but not very much, into my personal life, only as an entertainer. Uh, that's why I, what got me started with videos and photographs was when I started doing entertainment in the early 2000s. A person I was seeing at the time got me a camera for Christmas and said I should start posting some photographs of the shows online. So anyway, real quick story. I was not really into photography or videography uh, throughout my life. My brother was a little bit. Most people I knew were into taking kind of like photographs. Like my mom did early on in the 70s and the 80s and stuff, but um, I really did not like my photograph being taken. So as an entertainer, it was encouraged to me that it might be of help uh, to my endeavors and so I started to do it and I was trying to overcome that and in 2007-ish, 8-ish, 9-ish, there started to be a more increasing reason why I was interested in doing photography and maybe I'll talk about that sometime, uh, more like self-portraits because I started to get involved in modeling 
that's a long endeavor in itself, but then I just continued on in 2012 to share my life story and do videos of the songs that I've written, and that turned into what it is now. Maybe sometime I'll explain more of the details. It's quite interesting. It's amazing that I went from not wanting to even pretty much look at a camera uh, to keeping one with me at all times and taking photographs every once in a while of different things or um, especially when I feel like relieving myself psychologically of something that's been on my mind um, and sharing whether it's in sight or a location like this. Yep. Tracy Lynn, while you're editing this, if you can look for it, that would be great to put in the video of Paul David Bach. Thank you. That's it. Isn't this cool? Look at the lights. And he has ceiling pants. It's a pretty cool place. It looks like a great place uh, to play music and celebrate and have a good time. Hopefully someday soon, this summer maybe, or within the next summer or two, I'll have the opportunity to see either, I don't know if they have bike shows out here or not, but I always, uh, you know, I think a lot of times that I would have liked to stop by just to see all the motorcycles and stuff. So you never know what bikes are gonna show up, you know, at a facility like this, and I think that's one thing that's very interesting um, about establishments like this one here if you're into cars and motorcycle and great personalities Ta -da, baby. Ta -da. okay so I am gonna come over here I like the way it sounds do the wood I am gonna grab a seat I am very, 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 very grateful that Paul uh, invited me here to the Roadhouse, and I am extremely grateful um, that him and his friends were very kind to me. One more time, I like to say thank you. There are songs being played right now, and I don't really think, with all the copyright stuff, that I should be recording this, so I'm out of here. When I was thinking about coming to the events that they have here in the summertime, I'm not 100% sure. Is this where they park? I'm not 100% sure, but I think I parked over there. Let's go check it out. Let me check this out really quick. When I came here in uh, 2010, I parked back here somewhere. See the logs? Like, I seriously thought that was really cool to pull into, like, a gravel, stony kind of parking lot with those things. What are they? They kind of look like uh, telephone poles laying down <laughs> trees. I think that's cool in a parking lot like that. Okay. I just wanted to share that one thing that I thought was cool, too, that day. And before I got in my car, which is where I think I parked down there, before I got in my car, to leave. At some point while I was here, I came to the end here at the driveway to watch the motorcycles leave. Like there was a whole bunch of them that were leaving and stuff at some point. People coming. There was also people coming in. Kind of like a little child. I was watching the motorcycles coming out. Look at this. It's right across the street where I was. Look how high the river is. Looks like a nice place to uh, relax. Okay, I'm 
gonna go down here to see the bridge. This is the bike trail. There's a sign. I have I've ridden. I used to ride on this area of the trail a lot and near the end of 2014 all the way up until 2018. That's the sign that's here. So obviously whenever I would ride bike down this way, I would think Someday I'm going to stop over there and get a milkshake and see some nice cars and or motorcycles. Maybe someday I will and maybe someday I won't. You could do one. Not so long ago, I rode my bicycle across this bridge. I don't remember it being so filled with graffiti. Okay, maybe it was. We just like to say it's a shame. You know, look at the water. Um, the reason I came across here is because it's right across the street from the roadhouse and I once rode bike across this bridge and I stopped and there was something that was written here. Here's something. Stay humble. Okay. I don't really want to point out all the things that were written on it. Here's one. Love yourself. So it's not <laughs> that some of the graffiti uh, can't be of nice comment statements, but you know, what's the answer for that? I don't want to really talk about that right now. Um, there is much here. It appears much, much more uh, since I was here in 2017, 18-ish. The reason I did stop here is look how deep the river is right now, and look how fast that is. what happened over here with the trees. See that? And it all fell over on the high water. I think that this would be a really nice place for me to do a music video. As long as I can keep out some of the comments I'd rather not promote. <laughs> uh, in a way, you know what would be kind of cool? Is to kind of paint all the different colors all over this and make it a unique bridge. And then put some kind of cameras up here. And if you get caught spray painting on it again after that, <laughs> what happens? Leave a comment down below. The Tracy Lynn Michael comes here, makes a video, tries to keep some of the not-so-nice comments off. Somebody sees said video, sees the bridge, and decides it would be really cool to come here with a bunch of people, a lot of paint, <laughs> evidently, or whatever you could use for a bridge, and uh, transform it into something maybe a little more glorious. Then, Put an inexpensive camera up. <laughs> then you get caught on camera. Okay. What is the penalty? Ta -da! So I'll think about that. It's kind of like punky out here, isn't it? I'll get some punk clothes on. You think that would be cool? I get some ripped up jeans and stuff, put it on. I have a lot of songs that I could make videos with. You know, we'll always be looking for people who would like to be in videos. I'm also very open to what might be in the videos. As long as you think family friendly, childlike.
So this is more for me to grab hold of. I would recommend being careful down here. It looks like somebody had broken what appears to be plates or some kind of bottles and stuff. So I would not recommend walking uh, barefoot. Do you know what barefoot is? It's like a big bear. Very bear. I'll be returning here sometime soon. Okay, that's really nice. I like I like the different colors and not necessarily all of the statements. I think it's uh, the bridge itself is uh, attractive. An iron bridge is attractive in itself. The fact that it's here, um, the colors of whatever happened are pretty vibrant. If you like colorful. Okay, I don't necessarily know about all the comments. What makes tracks like that? Is that a bear? <laughs> Is this bear tracks? <laughs> I should get a bear costume and put it on down here. Rawr. 